You might not think that country superstar Garth Brooks has much in common with Michael Jordan, but he actually made a career change that was very similar to one made by the NBA legend. What was it? Keep watching to find out. Troy Garth Brooks grew up in Oklahoma as the youngest of six children. His mother, Colleen, was actually a country singer herself, who was signed to Capitol Records back in the 1950s, and the whole family was quite musical as a result. Brooks described his childhood to Playboy in 1994, saying, Friday and Saturday nights at the house, Jerry played guitar, Jim played the harmonica, Mike played guitar, Betsy played guitar, and of course, Dad played guitar. Mom sang her butt off, Dad sang, Betsy sang, Jerry sang, Jim sang, Mike sang, Kelly and I played the wax comb. And music wasn't the only way that Brooks showed off his chops during his youth. In high school, he played baseball, and he was also the quarterback on the football team. He also even attended Oklahoma State University Stillwater, on a track and field scholarship for Javelin. But as he tells it, he wasn't a very good athlete or student. Nevertheless, as he revealed in a video on his Facebook in 2021, he enjoyed his time as a college athlete, as meeting people from all over the country and other parts of the world was a brand new experience for him. It was a good chance for me to kind of broaden my horizons because I'd never been out of Yukon, Oklahoma. While Brooks may have enjoyed his time as a college athlete, something arguably much more important happened to him during this period of his life. Specifically, during his senior year, he met his future wife Sandy Mall. He graduated in 1984, and then they tied the knot two years later. When Brooks released his self-titled debut album in 1989, Mall became not only his partner in life, but also his partner in music as well, as she co-wrote the song I've Got a Good Thing Going for that album. She also helped write that summer for his 1992 album, The Chase. In a 1989 interview with UPI, Brooks revealed that Maul convinced him to stay in Nashville after having already left once before when things weren't going so well. As he put it, I was ready to head back the second time when the band fell apart. She kept me out here. Being inducted into the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville is one of the highest achievements in country music, but it's not exactly a guarantee, even for the biggest stars. There are some huge names in the genre who aren't members, but Garth Brooks isn't among the snubbed. In fact, he was inducted into the Opry on October 6, 1990, just a year after releasing his debut album. For Brooks, this honor was truly the pinnacle of his young career. As reported in the book Country Music Culture by Curtis W. Ellison, Brooks said of his induction, "...to be recognized as a member is among the class of honors that will never be topped, no matter how long or how far my career goes." That's saying a lot, considering just how far his career has gone in the years since. While Brooks was skyrocketing to fame and growing as an artist in the early 90s, he was also becoming a father. He and Sandy Mall had planned to wait a few more years before having a baby, but life had other plans. They welcomed their first daughter, Taylor Maine Pearl, in 1992, and she was followed by August Anna in 1994 and Ali Colleen in 1996. It didn't take much for Brooks to realize that his career would eventually need to take a back seat to fatherhood. It was while rocking his oldest shortly after her birth that he made her a promise. As he revealed to the Tennessean in 2019, I said, look, by the time you're six years old, that's when school starts. I'll be done. For Brooks, nothing compares to being a father. As he told People magazine in 2015, kids are the greatest joy and the greatest heartache you'll ever have. I found something that meant more and I loved more than music itself. While it may have been the javelin that earned Garth Brooks a college scholarship, baseball is the sport that truly stuck with him. In 1998, he went so far as joining the San Diego Padres for two days of their spring training. The following year, he signed a contract with the team and was invited to spring training once again. In a local news interview from the time, he made it clear how serious he was. Hopefully when they look at me and see the Padres uniform on my chest, I'd like for them to stand proud and say, you know, the guy's trying to be a ball player. Brooks wasn't exactly a star player, but he did manage to sign with the New York Mets for spring training the following year and with the Kansas City Royals in 2004. Of his time with the Royals, he told the Oklahoman, "...the guys have told me not to quit my day job." A stint with Major League Baseball wasn't Garth Brooks' only major career shift. This next example demonstrates that when you're a megastar, you can get away with just about anything without much consequence. Perhaps that's what Brooks was thinking in 1999 when he debuted his alter ego Chris Gaines. Gaines was actually a character created for a movie, but the soundtrack, entitled The Life of Chris Gaines, was released ahead of the movie. And let's just say it didn't go according to plan. There was no acknowledgement on the album that Brooks was the man behind the wig. People were confused, the album flopped, and the movie was scrapped. Despite all this, Brooks has stood behind his dramatic transformation for the sake of art. As he told the Tennessean in 2019, "...I don't know anything about movies, but what I do know about art is you give your heart and soul to it. So if you're going to play a character, you become that character in my book. And you do it without apology." If I was your role manager, man, I'd drop Chris Gaines like a hot plate, man. 
Despite Chris Gaines not amounting to very much, Brooks was arguably at the height of his popularity by the turn of the century. But then in 2000, he announced his retirement from recording and performing. He said at the time that he was retiring until the youngest of his daughters finished high school, which was over a decade away. Brooks's manager was trying to convince him not to use the word retirement when making the announcement about stepping away. He did anyway, though that doesn't mean it was easy to actually say it out loud. After all, he was walking away from one of the biggest careers in country music. As he told People magazine in 2015, people said, how could you walk away from music? But being a dad, there's nothing that can touch that. In fact, Brooks fully embraced his retirement, as he became part of the community around him in a brand new way. As he put it, the dads across the soccer field looked at me as a dad just like them, and I was very grateful. Another thing that directly impacted Brooks' decision to retire was the end of his marriage to Sandy Mall. Alas, Brooks' fame proved to be a burden on his family. As Maul explained on the A&E documentary Garth Brooks' The Road I'm On, he'd be gone eight to ten weeks at a time. He'd come home, and there would be number one parties, or shows, or CMAs, or ACMs, American Music Awards, so it was constantly going. But we both grew apart really, really quickly. As the divorce loomed, Brooks realized that he couldn't maintain the career he'd created. Maul had essentially been functioning as both parents while he was touring, and he knew that that couldn't continue. But that realization wasn't enough to save their marriage, as the divorce was finalized in 2001. Brooks wouldn't remain a newly available bachelor for too long, as he would go on to marry fellow country star Trisha Yearwood. The two of them actually first met in 1987, and it had a surprising impact on him. As he explained during an appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, "...it's strange, because I felt that feeling like when you just meet your wife, but I'd been married for 13 months." Brooks and Yearwood would go on to collaborate musically, including recording and touring together. But it wasn't until after his divorce from Maul that they started dating. Brooks proposed on stage in May 2005, and they got married that December. Miss Yearwood, as Brooks and his daughters call her, has loved becoming part of the family. Talking about Brooks' daughters, Yearwood told People magazine in 2021, "...they were a gift that I didn't know I needed. I didn't know how much children brought into your life until I got a chance to be a part of their lives." And it was the youngest, Allie, that said, "...we got your back, bra strap." Although Brooks retired to focus on his family, he would still make the occasional musical appearance, including performing at President Barack Obama's inauguration in January 2009. It wasn't until later that year, though, that he was finally convinced to return to semi-regular performing. In the summer of that year, Brooks performed two secret shows at the Encore Theater in Las Vegas that ultimately led to a much bigger gig. He announced that October that he was coming out of retirement for a Las Vegas residency, thanks at least in part to a gift from billionaire Steve Wynn. As Wynn noted to reporters, "...in order to accomplish this goal, I will confess I had to buy him a jet plane." "...it's a gift that we're given our guests." The private jet allowed Brooks to make the trip to and from Oklahoma each week during the five-year weekend residency. Thus, he was able to maintain his promise to his daughters to drive them to school every day until they were in college. As Brooks commuted to and from Las Vegas on the weekends during his residency, returning to see his kids off to school during the week, he apparently had a bit of downtime. In May 2011, he made a surprise appearance at the Oklahoma State University Graduate School commencement ceremony. But he wasn't there to put on a concert. No, in fact, he was one of the graduates. As it turned out, Brooks had taken advantage of the school's distance learning program to complete his master's degree in business administration. During a 2017 interview with Billboard, he noted, "...the most unfun part of my career is the business. Nevertheless, it's clear that he understands the importance of knowing about the business and that he's always looking to learn more." After all, how many professional musicians can you name who have a bachelor's degree in advertising and an MBA? At the end of his Las Vegas residency in 2014, Brooks was finally ready to really come out of retirement, and not just on the weekends. It helped that his youngest daughter told him she decided that she wanted to go to college in Nashville. As Brooks told Billboard in 2016, "...I'm sitting there going, holy cow, she wants to go to Nashville. This might be the perfect opportunity to move back with her." So in July 2014, Brooks announced his comeback world tour, as well as the release of a new album, exclusively available digitally on his website. Then, in September, he launched the Garth Brooks World Tour, which lasted for three years until December 2017, and sold more than 6.4 million tickets. He played multiple shows in each city and sometimes did two shows in a single night. Despite his years away from the industry, Brooks felt right at home. As he revealed to Billboard at the end of the tour, "...I have never felt more like part of the business than I have right now. I've never felt more welcome." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite country stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.